Welcome to episode eight, college degree versus tradesman versus being an entrepreneur. In this episode, I will be featuring Chatez Barnes, childhood friend, got a lot of history. Um, not saying that you have to regret your past and um, not saying you have to change everything, but this episode is a bit about what would you do if you had the opportunity to go back in the past and change some things and looking back, what things have you learned that you will use for the rest of your life to ensure that you pass those things on down to your children. So this would be a good episode, some good self-reflecting. Thanks for listening. Please visit our site at www.richstateofmind.com where we provide content on real estate, personal finances, and self-development. Share your story and information by posting a blog on our site so that the Rich State of Mind community continues to grow in knowledge. You can also follow our Instagram page at rich underscore state brand to find out about exclusive offers and discount promotions for our apparel. Welcome to the show, man. I appreciate you taking the time out of your evening to, uh, to join me and me on my uh, duty day, making the time, <laughs> making the time. <laughs> so, uh, yo, so first of all, me and you go way back 15, 14, no, 15, 16 years back. So, so kind of yeah. how like me and you and jo- uh, Josh, we got a lot of history. So tons of stuff to talk about. But the main thing we wanted to talk about was like, if we could go back in time, what we would have did different. <laughs> so so right. we told a little bit about that the other day, and it was just like, damn, man, like, if I knew what I know now, if I knew back in 2008 when we were throwing our hats up in the air and graduating, I think, I think our lives would have been totally different. Not that we regret anything. Like, obviously, right. you got right. your family, I have mine, and maybe if we would have made those different decisions, we wouldn't have the family we have today. But probably there would have been, maybe we would have gave our past selves like a little hint, like, hey, you sure you want to do that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So I was gonna ask you, so when we so we went through high school together, but from your from your mm-hmm. point of view, like how did high school kind of impact you into the decisions you made in your adulthood? Uh well for me, I, you know, playing football, man, you know, that was really the only thing in my mind at that point right there, man. So it was like for me, it was like if I wanted to keep on playing, I knew I had to go to college. And then, you know, the whole time I'm in high school, all I'm hearing is, you know, a hey, try to keep your grades up, stay healthy on the field, so you can go play a little bit longer in college, get your education. So that's kind of what drove me down that path, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And I remember uh, I remember going to Shaw University and doing the open house. And I remember meeting up with you, I think AJ, you and AJ. Yeah, and I remember. Yep. Uh, you know what's funny, man? Was it at least eleven years now? And I remember Shim. Like I remember y'all giving me a heads up about Shim. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I didn't want you to be shell shot like I was when I first. <laughs> Yo, cause, so that's more acceptable now. But I know back then I was just like, I'm glad y'all gave me the heads up. But I was just like, whoa, like. <laughs> it was crazy, man. It's like you, you, you don't expect to see somebody that flamboyant with their, you know. But you know what? Though he was a trailblazer because he was the only one on campus dressed like that. We yeah, and everything. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I give, I give it to to Shim. Yeah, that was crazy. I would say for me, um, for high school, I knew I wanted to do. I, I was never afraid of hard work. I think that was for all of us in our group. Like, none of us was afraid mm-hmm. of work, and I don't think none of us was really lazy at all. We all work. But I know for me, it was mm-hmm. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Like, I knew I wanted to do business. I was kind of intimidated by college, how much it cost. You know, I didn't get no scholarship. Should go with my GPA. I think my GPA was, like, 2.3. Like, I didn't take mm-hmm. high school serious at all. It's funny because, like, now I take online classes, and my, my GPA is, like, 3.7. But... Ain't that crazy how that changes, though, man? Yeah, I guess cause it's just it's just giving a damn. That's all it really is, man. And yeah. I got to pay the money yeah. back if I fail the class, so that's some. Yeah, that's an, that's an incentive. <laughs> yeah. So 
I know my parents, they would, you know, they talked about college. I, I knew I wasn't going to be no major league baseball player. Like, I was good all conference, but I knew I wasn't going to be, like, full ride. Like, I saw some of those kids playing. I knew, like, okay, those guys going to get it. They're, like, 6'4", 250, and they're 16, mm. 16, 16 years old, you know? Right. But I think that, you know, our parents, they kind of – they say, hey, you know, get a secure job. Make sure that when you grow up, you get your benefits. Uh, all the things to kind of make sure that whatever they did to secure the bag so that they can take care of you, they tell, tell you. But I think a lot of parents don't really tell their, their kids, hey, do something different so that you could do better than me. Um, yeah. There's more to life than just getting that college degree. And I, I, I learned that uh, within the, my years of experience uh, in the military, even though in the military you don't have you don't need a degree, I've seen civilians kind of make it. I saw, um, yo, literally two days ago, no Tuesday, yeah, so two days ago, it was a dude that got administrative administratively separated from the Navy because he was um, pretty much a bad CEO, always getting in trouble, right? Got caught stealing, mm-hmm. got caught stealing. He was Nintendo Switches and stuff like that, and always stealing stuff, like, always getting in trouble. So I have, I went to this open house for this foreplay. I showed up to the open house and mm-hmm. see a bunch of white people there, but I see this one young black kid there. I'm like, yo, who's this young black kid? And I walk past, and I notice it's this dude that used to be on my boat, the dude that got, you know, administratively separated. So I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. snap, what's up, bro? He's like, hey, what's up, PS1? Oh, man, I'm like, yo, what you doing here, you know? Uh, he was like, yo, I'm a, I'm a real estate investor now. My word? Like, yeah. Because he's been out of the Navy at this time already three months. So I always kind of, like, I take it a little bit to heart, like any black kid being kind of kicked out for being a trouble troublemaker or whatever. I'd be, mm-hmm. Obviously, we got to hold them accountable and, and get them out of the Navy. But at the same time, like, I do wish the best for them, like, out in, out in the real world. Cause statistically, obviously, you know, things ain't going to really work out for them. So, like, right. So the funny thing is, like, since I saw him and I saw these people showing up, I was like, you know what? I'm going to increase my bid, which I did, and I ended up coming in second place. So I'm actually waiting to see if, uh, if I'm going to be the backup. Well, I am the backup, but I'm going to see if they, this other person fall through. But low-key, I kind of hope he's the one that's in front of me because I kind of I want to see him I want to see him come up. Uh, so, like, I wish – he's, like, at least 19 years old. Like, I wish mm-hmm. I was put on that early to some of these – other avenues of being successful and whoever spoke into his life about what he's doing right now, you know, I guess, you know, bless them because he gives him a kind of a second, a second life, a second restart. Yeah. For, for you, mean, what you seeing? I mean, really for, for me, it's mostly like the more people that you talk to that you go to college with, They'll they'll tell you like maybe you realize after a year or two after you graduate it's kind of like you you don't have that sense of fulfillment that you thought you would have once you walk across the stage you know what I'm saying so like for example I know three people that were in my department which was physical education exercise science okay so they were in the same department that I was in. None of them work in their fi- in the field of study, but they all make a lot more than what they would make if they were working in that field of study. And one of them actually is a realtor. So it's like, it makes you kind of wonder, like, okay, did I waste four years and potentially going into thousands of dollars of debt for something that I really may not have needed? So I guess it's I mean, based so- off the market. You know, like, what's the needs of the market right now? And what I've seen in the shift is, like, when we were growing up, and even for our parents, the main thing that was mm-hmm. pushed is get your degree. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you didn't get your degree, yeah. you was doomed. Yeah, like you, like, you were doomed to fail in life. Yeah. And so, <laughs> if I, like, the stats right here show me, I'm looking at 2019 stats. Those that got a bachelor's degree average $60,000 a year. And right. unemployment is 2.5% in America. Which ain't bad. And 60K ain't bad in America. Like, you could live off of that. You could raise your family. It's not horrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you're right. I, so, one thing I did notice, because you talked about debt to income, 
So I was talking to uh, somebody that I know that they got their masters, right? And uh-huh. they own a house, they got their masters. And when they got their masters, their job gave them a $2,500 increase in their income annually, right? Right. So he, he was talking to me about me buying his house from him. And I was just telling him, like, hey, you know, you should, you should sell your house. Like, you, not you shouldn't sell your house. You should keep your house. When you buy your new house, keep the one you got. He, his mortgage is like 800 but he can rent it out for like 14 So that's like a $600 a month, you know, income, right? So I told right. him, like, yo, do the math on that. So like 600 times 12 is 7200 I said, so just from, you didn't do anything but just take advice from somebody in like 30 seconds. And your, and your, and your income just got increased by 7200 Right. And and that's the thing. It's like there's certain things and tricks and stuff like that that you learn as you get older and you're just like, damn, where was this out yet when I was like younger? Yeah, exactly. So like, where well, <laughs> it's that's crazy. This cost? Like twenty grand? And and re- with that it depends on where you're going. Yeah, true, true. It depends on what school you're going to. I mean, you know, the better the school, obviously, the higher the cost, you know? Yeah. yeah I thought that was very but, interesting. Like, there's, there's ways around yeah. it. You go from 2500 going all this these classes, all this schooling, and then uh-huh. some short advice, $7,200, and it didn't cost you anything. Right. I mean, it's crazy, man. I mean, it's... It's my, that's my bottom, really. I mean, he didn't have to do anything at all just to get that increase in just, you know, income. I was looking meanwhile, at meanwhile, you got people that go get their master's and whatnot. Like, I know one person. They owe, what was it? I want to say it was, okay, it was 125K. That's how much they have to pay back on loans. 125K? Yes. What, what's the degree? They haven't even. And, uh, what do they go to school for? I can't remember exactly what they went to school for, but it wasn't nothing like engineering or anything like that, or anything like computer science, nothing like that. Like yeah. those fields like that, I can understand. You know, engineers make good money. No, yeah, 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 for sure. Like this, there's some degrees I've seen like definitely return return on your investment. Uh, mm-hmm. and I think others. So it, I guess this kind of makes you want to think, okay, so because you, you have a son, I have a son, we're both, we're both, mm-hmm. we're both parents now. So what are we going to teach our kids so to make sure, like, hey, look, you know, daddy, we, you know, I did it this way, but this is a different way you could do it. Because, like, for me, like, right now my son is telling me he wants to be a Navy policeman, right? But right. if I had to choose, I wouldn't really want him to join the Navy. I would want him to do something that's more, you know, freeing. Like the Navy tells me when I can when I can go to sleep, when I gotta go on deployment, when I can't see my family, when I can't be on my phone, like a bunch of inconveniences. And I would mm-hmm. tell them like, yo, there's other ways to make a living without having to be so constricted and having all these other adults tell you how to live your life. Uh, right. But and then because he'll have the option because he won't have to do it out of necessity. What, what would be something right. you would tell your son? Well, I know for my son. For some reason, I just have a feeling that he's probably going to want to take that sports path because I mean he's he's into sports. Even at three years old, he loves sports, and he always and he always says, "Daddy, I want to be a football player. Now I want to be a basketball player, or something like that." I mean, now realistically, you know, I'm going to know like you know, hey, no, like, don't put all your eggs in that basket. I'm not going to tell him he can't do it, but if I'm going to give him advice, when you if you choose to go to college, okay, let's sit now and let's talk about degree fields. And feels that you're going to potentially get back a good invest, a good you know investment for your uh, for your time in college. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like let's let's look at you know maybe that computer science field. Let's look at engineering. Let's look at stuff like that. Let's not go with like what majority of athletes do and go that physical education route. You know, just because it's easy. Let's let's look at these degree fields where you can end up graduating and potentially end up getting a good job that's going to pay you for what you're worth as far as with that degree. That's the type of that's the type of thing that I'm gonna try and, you know, go over with him as he gets older. Now if he doesn't want to go to college, I have no problem with that. 
I mean, I'm gonna also I'm gonna explain to him his options. You know, hey, there's trade school. There are other routes. You don't have to go to a four year university if you don't want to. Yeah, and I think one thing too I'm gonna tell my son is a work life balance. Like, you know, mm-hmm. we we work so we work hard in these jobs that can replace us like that. You know, what I'm saying once we drop mm-hmm. dead and we quit, they gonna find a replacement. And so, you don't want to be chasing the promotion or chasing the dollar, and then real forgetting about the family that you have. Uh, that's yeah. gonna be there at the end of the day when you when you're working, when you're retired, when you're in the grave. Mm-hmm. Your family gonna be there at the end of the day. And I would tell, I've seen so many people sacrifice their uh, their family and, and loved ones because they want to chase a particular status uh, in in their careers. And I, I I've learned that it's not worth. It. I think young when Anthony was an infant or before Anthony was born, all in, I'm doing it, anything hard, all these hours are cool. But I would say this last deployment, bro, this last deployment definitely put things in perspective for me. Because Anthony's going on eight years old now, and he's definitely remembering daddy being gone. And yeah, I, that's what kind of got me thinking, like, you know, you know, if I could turn back the hands of time, would have I would I have re-enlisted? Would I had I probably got out of my EAS and stayed in Los Angeles. You know, should I get out now? I mean, you know, a few years when my contract is up because right. I can, now that I know what I need to know, I can still support my family and have that, and have that time. So, yeah, I mean, these are things that you definitely think about as you become older, as far as being a, and you know, being a man, you know, when you, things change when you, when you, you get a family, you know, it's just because, because it's not about you anymore. You know, I got a wife I got to think about. I got a kid I got to think about. I got to think about how I'm moving because how I move affects them. You know, what I mean? these these are the tough decisions that you know we st- we're forced to make as men. Yeah. So I can definitely understand it. Yeah, definitely. Because I look at uh, I know I look at a lot of people and what they do, and I I try not to compare, but um, mm-hmm. Some people, I'm just like, yo, you know what? God bless them because I see that they they made something. I don't know what they do, but they sure enough got enough time to do spend time with their family and do what they love. And I know yeah. to a lot of people, for like, so my perspective, like I've always looked at y'all, you know, so half the boys joined the military and half the boys kind of went to college, actually. Like Kurt, me, Jerome, Josh, like we joined the military. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You and the other half of the boys, y'all went to college. And I kind of yeah. I kind of do like, Okay, so our experience was interesting. Like, I feel like, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Like, I feel like we got two of the both extremes. Mm-hmm. But, but, we, but we all kind of stayed level at the same time. And it kind of, yeah. I do appreciate the perspective because as I, when I talk to you, I talk, you know, anybody else that went to college and they got that college experience and they tell me their perspective of joining the market, you know, growing a family, and then, you know, me, Josh, and Jerome we decided to go our own way either after they left the military or staying in. For me, how we mm-hmm. – you can make it because, you know, a lot of people in the military will, will sell it as, like, you can't – yo, you get out of the military, it's a wrap. Like, you won't survive. And uh, and you got some people, too, that kind of, that's in the market that will, will support that. But I, I don't know, man. Even during these COVID times, I'm saying that it's still possible to, to be successful and – and make this money somehow, some way. I think a lot of people getting creative during this last year, being quarantined. Definitely. I mean, I've seen, and I, and I was just talking to to Kurt about it yesterday when he called me. Like, the creativity that I'm seeing during this whole pandemic is, like, amazing, man. I mean, I'm seeing people create virtual platforms, people creating podcasts such as this one. I mean, it's the create. I mean, I guess when you're forced to sit within your thoughts, you know, <laughs> you have no choice but to create something. Yeah. So that's why. I mean, that's why sometimes I say, I say, you know, hey, the pandemic yeah, is okay. Yeah, we we know COVID is bad, but there's been some good stuff that's come from this pandemic too. It slowed a lot of people down and made a lot of people start thinking more. What I'm waiting on is I'm waiting for all this to fizz out and see who who comes out on top, right? Because everybody's mm-hmm. using their time to try to be creative. And actually, there was some, there's some cool stuff that people are doing on TikTok. Like, they're making, like, how-to videos or whatever. So, yeah. I'm waiting to see who's going to rise out of the top after all this. And then I, I look for us, you know, black and unfiltered, 
you know, me doing my podcast. I look for us to kind of stay consistent and come out on top because I, I see – I love what you're doing, by the way. I haven't even mentioned that the whole time we've been talking. Like, I appreciate your gritty side of it and how <laughs> – you you were saying things that people want to say. They say in their head, but they ain't really trying to say out loud. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. That's what it's all about, man. I mean, the whole the whole thing is we and we talk about it every day in our group chat is that you know, hey, we we're here to try and be a voice for the people that want to say something, but either can't or they just too afraid to. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can't speak as unfiltered as we do as far as on our show. So we just try to be that voice for everybody. But that what you were saying as far as coming out on top, the people that can come out on top are the people that stay consistent throughout this whole thing. Yeah, and that's what I'm noticing too. So like if I was to tell if I was to tell my younger version twelve years ago like what to do, I would have I probably would have told him, mm-hmm. Hey, look, find a niche, find something that you're interested in and just stick with it. And it, it'll it'll come out. Because yeah. like, okay, we were eighteen then. Oh, by the time we would have been 30, we would have been millionaires. We would have set out to do what we wanted to do already. Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially with the boom of social media, when we, you know, we were coming up, you know, social media was just kind of in its early stage, you know, with the MySpace and all that. That's where things really started taking off to the next level. And then YouTube really started taking off and you had people start creating more stuff. So it's like, when I look at what I'm doing now, it's like, I wish I had started back then because the people that started back then, they're already established. And, you know, hey, we you're right. We probably could be millionaires right now. Yeah, we could be recording in our, in our own little studio that one of us owns at this point. But I, I would like to say that I think that it's, not, it's still not too late. Is it a little bit harder now? Probably, yeah. But I think that's where, that's where creativity, creativity is going to come out and we'll be, uh-huh. you know, our own you know, be our own thing. People will be able to, we'll be able to stand out from others. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think that's fine. I, I think, it's like I was saying at the beginning of the episode, like, I think, don't, I don't have any regrets. And I, and I definitely, right. I'm appreciative of the things that we learned so that, because I feel, I still think we're ahead of the game so that when we go into our thirties now, because now we're getting old, right? Uh, mm-hmm. When we head into our thirties, <laughs> I think we'll be, uh, well prepared, way better off, and I'm actually looking. I'm looking forward to getting older. I'm actually looking forward to my 30s uh, with my homie still playing 2K and uh, still talking on the, on the group chat. You know, just spitting ideas and you know being funny and really trying to. I, and also to, to being supportive. You know, that's one thing yeah. I can say is consistently about our group, man. We we're definitely very supportive of each other. Uh, ideas, you know, what I'm saying, famous doing his uh, tutorials. Yeah. Stuff like that. Shit. Yeah, I mean, and, th- and, th- and that's what's about at the end of the day, man. It's about, it's about support, man. You got to support your own, man. You got to. You got to. It's like, we're, but you doing this podcast, man, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. you you're you're going to change the mindset of a lot of people, man. I mean, the more people you reach, you're really going to change the mindset. Like I told you, when I listen, when I was listening to I was like, man, like, Rich really is spitting some real knowledge up here, and I'm like, okay, you you really made me sit back and look in the mirror. Like, okay, have I been doing things right financially? You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's and that's what you want to do as far as when you have a podcast like this. You want to make people think, make them sit back and do that reevaluation. I'm telling you, you watch, man. It's be more people like me saying that you change your mindset before it's all said and done, bro. Watch. I appreciate it because I didn't know, but. And so this is what kind of gives me a little bit of hope. I didn't know there was still 50%. The last thing, the last information I got, 50% of the world slash United States that still don't listen to podcasts. So there's still a lot of people out there that mm-hmm. you can still reach out to that just don't hear the things that we hear all the time because we always on social media, always on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Listen, well, plus, you know, you know, what they call it, Big Brother, Big Brother watching over us. Mm-hmm. I click in, I click and look yeah. at something once on Google. Now I'm seeing enough of the, those advertisements on Facebook all the time and Instagram. You know, right. I got weight loss. Mm-hmm. Now I'm seeing a bunch of hydroxy cut, you know, advertisements <laughs> and stuff. So, like, I'm always being seeing that stuff. So, to me, it's like, oh man, I'm always seeing there's so much competition always going on. But to somebody else, Maybe that's something they're always looking at gospel stuff. So they're not really exposed to fitness or they're not really exposed to finances. 
And so there, there's right. still a lot of people that we can reach out to. And I, that's why I say I don't think it's over yet. I don't think it's oversaturated yet. I think it's still possible for a lot of people to win uh, through social media and through the un, mm-hmm. unconventional ways. Now, yeah. and this, don't get me wrong, because, like, if, yo, the average person, because I don't want to deter nobody from getting their degree. If, if somebody has a passion for something, hey, go ahead and do that. Because, shoot, the right. average person that uh, has a master's annually makes $72,000 a year nationwide. And then the average person that is a doctor makes 90K. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and to anybody listening to this, I mean, hey, I'm not saying, I'm not, by any means, I'm not saying do not go to college. If that's what you want to do, pursue what you want to do, you know, I'm just saying, my experience wise, if there's other options, you know, you just, I, I just don't want anybody to be that guy. Like me, for example, if I knew back then, in high school, I know now, I more than likely would have went probably into the shipyard at that point because my dad, you know, he's worked there for so many years. He had all those connections with all those people in those high in those high places that I could have gotten there easy, could have gotten trained really well, and probably can be making a lot of money at this point. You know, so I mean, it's just all it's, it's all about what you want to do, man. I mean. For me, for me personally, I probably went shipyard out of high school and just went ahead and started working and trying to make me some money. Yeah, I met a few people uh, up here actually. A couple of the guys that we went to high school with, they uh, did the shipyards and they fell it out really well. They do their deployment and then they're home for a while, stack up their bread and they, they do some other type of venture and then they go back out. Uh, so they get to see the world too and make some good change. Yeah. So nurture I mean, marines. Me personally, I would, yep, I would have did something like that. And then we came back and probably invested my money in something to where, you know, I could have had my own business. Exactly. Yeah. I never, I've heard nothing but good things about the shipyards as far as uh, people that work for there, to be honest with you, out here, especially in Norfolk. I've never heard anybody saying they had a yeah. bad financial experience. Like, you don't, make, you don't make no money. Like, I've seen a lot of people, that's their go-to, and then they do their time, and then they get out and do something else, or they stick with it for, like, 30 years. Yeah. I mean, and it's, and the, it's the possibility to make money there is there. It's definitely there. If you can start off making some good money, man, then you can also, it's also a field where you can move up. So that's what that helps. Yeah. I think also another thing, too, that people downplay uh, being a tradesman, being, you know, plumbers, mechanics, contractors, electricians, I, I've grown a huge respect for that, that, uh, that category of, of work mm-hmm. in, in the market dealing with uh, real estate because – those guys, I would say one thing big about that that industry is integrity. If you if you're a person that has, mm-hmm. has a good heart, you got integrity and you work hard, you, know, you the sky's the limit on how much income you can make and being a tradesman. Especially if you can go clientele. Yep. Because a lot of that you're definitely a lot right of that it. made me want to try to learn that stuff on my own. That's why I tried I started trying to uh, do it yourself type projects. I would see some of these mm-hmm. guys do this stuff. I'm like, right, let me see if I can do this save a buck. But I got mad respect for those guys. Um, and I could, it's always a chase, though. I would say that. Like, obviously, if you don't work, you don't get no money. But yeah, I'd have to look more into the industry to see at some point how can you kind of fall back a bit. I guess, I guess you would have to make a business. But I do appreciate those guys a whole lot. And I think that's something that we don't – they don't push the schools anymore. Like, they, you don't have – I don't – do they still do carpenter school class workshops? Uh, I don't. I don't think they push it as hard. I mean, which they would. They weren't pushing it as hard when we were there either. But they did push it, but they don't push it as hard anymore. Man. Even being a barber, being a barber, being a carpenter, being a plumber, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Those jobs still need. It's almost like they just kind of leave it for the for the high school dropouts or for the people that just get high school diplomas. Because they assume, I guess, hey, yeah. these guys will fill in those spots and the other jobs, being a teacher or, you know, being a physical therapist or something like that, psychologist, you know, those are, you know, people with the degrees. But I feel like they could, should go back to where, like, sometime throughout your high school time, that class, there's a, there's a plumbing class, you know, there's a carpentry yeah. class. So, some, so you could do some type of apprenticeship coming in, coming out of high school. Yeah. Definitely. I do. I will say that um, 
I think for like exceptional children, like special needs kids, they are doing a thing where it's um, what is it called? It's like an occupational study that they do for them in high school, right? And what they do is they let them um go out and you know maybe for an hour or so they'll go somewhere and they'll work just to you know see what it's like as far as in the work world like the one like the ones that can handle it you know what i'm saying which i I thought that was dope when i first found out about it, that you know at least, at least you're teaching those kids like that that hey you're yeah because you have special needs that doesn't mean you can't go and live a semi-normal life i didn't know that yeah I wonder what the funding. I wonder what the yeah. funding is like on that. Is that something that you can? I wonder if that's something that people can contribute to to, to keep the funding going on. Or is that something that's voted on? Uh, I can definitely find out, and I will definitely get back with you on that. Because you always forget. You always think figure that those guys are the forgotten. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so I thought that was something, you know, that was something neat for them to be doing for that, you know, that population of students. And I would say, uh, is that just in North Carolina? Uh, I don't know if they do it in other states. I just know about this one. But I would think they would do it. I would think they would do it in other states. That's pretty good. Especially someone like Virginia. I know they give them, I know they probably have way better funding than what we do. True, true. <laughs> So what would you consider your rich state of mind? My rich state of mind. Getting, being able to leave my son something. That is mine. You know, I, I my parents, they don't really have anything to leave me, which is fine. You know, they, they did the best that they could for me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm forever grateful for that. But me, I want to be able to leave my son something that's of value that he can, you know, build upon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, and I think that's kind of why I push so hard with, like, the Black Run Filter podcast and, you know, which we transition to a radio show because I'm trying to build a brand, you know, that could potentially be something to where, hey, he has way more options than what I may have had when he decides to do whatever he's going to do. So I guess I'm kind of almost like along the lines of you, that generational wealth. I, I got a lot of love and, and appreciation for that. And especially, you know, I consider you like a brother and uh, it makes me happy and proud that, you know, you want to do the same, you know, so much love to you on that, man. And, you know, if anything, no definitely, you know, support anything that you're trying to do especially with something like that. So episode seven, y'all got coming out, what, next week? Uh, We were supposed to record it this Saturday, but I don't know, because I think we have a meeting with the radio station on that Saturday. So it might be sometime a little later in the week when we put one out. If not, we'll just put one out the week after that. So I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't, I didn't think this thing would take off as uh, as quick as it did. <laughs> so it's kind of like I'm still trying to catch my bearings with a lot of stuff. It's like a, I'll, I'm always emailing something, or somebody's always texting me late night, or sending me something this and the third. So it's like, I mean, I'm not complaining. So now nah, I would say this, man: when you create opportunities for yourself, it's funny how other opportunities fall in your lap. So that's what happened. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like, if you if you had told me that I would be on a black owned radio internet radio station within four weeks of starting something, I would have probably looked and said you're crazy. <laughs> Facts, no nah, man. But yeah. it's real. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Well, I appreciate you being up here, man, and I hope we can do this again sometime. And uh, you know, I'll be on the put me on like the 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 filtered episode of the next black and unfiltered episode you have. So I'm I mean, no, so in trouble. No, we we got a perfect one for you. We'll bring you in when we're talking about hip hop and sports. All right, there we you, go. Because I'll, I I'll talk you. about mellow. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about skinny mellow. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure that that episode we're not talking about anything dealing with politics or anything of that nature. We will be sports and hip hop will we'll cater it just for you. I, I appreciate that. Just let me know, bro. But I appreciate you. No doubt.
No doubt, All bro. Right, later. Later.